Now, many of us, when we hear that word accountability, we tend to maybe just cringe a little bit, maybe even let out a big sigh like, oh, no, not this topic. But if you're like me, you see, I, I know that I need accountability. I want to be accountable to myself. I, I want to be accountable to those people that I love and those people that I serve on a daily basis. I want to be accountable to my team here at Building Champions. I don't want to be that guy that when I walk in, everybody's like, oh, there's Dan, the guy that overpromises and underdelivers. Um, that, that's not the label that I want. And so as I was thinking about this topic today, and I've had about you know a couple of weeks to kind of prepare for this call. I, you know, I started to reflect just on the on the past few years as as my role as a as a coach and as a leader. Uh, before I was here at Building Champions as a manager in sales and even as a sales professional and and a husband and as a father. And I was reflecting back and I thought about you know what were the different times where I really saw success and failure as it relates to accountability. And as I started reflecting, I started to realize that, you know, there, there are really certain steps that we all have to take in order for us to be accountable and to really harness that power of accountability in our lives. And when we take these steps, we can be more purposeful, we can be more intentional, and they will help you harness that power of accountability. But here's a caveat. When I came up with these steps, I realized that you really can't jump from step one to step four and say, ah, I've got steps two and three figured out, or I've done that before. You've got to go through these steps in order. And so today, I, I ask that you maybe just listen, not to agree or disagree, but just to learn just to evaluate. And I invite you to, to put these steps into practice in your life. I'm, I'm confident from my experience as a manager and as a leader and, and my personal experience as a husband and as a father and as a person that wants to be purposeful and wants to be intentional in my life, someone that wants to be accountable, that if you put these steps into action, you're going to achieve success. Okay, so let's, let's get started. The first step in being more accountable and harnessing that power of accountability is for you to actually realize what is at the heart of accountability. And at the heart, at its core, is something really unique, something really, I think, amazing, really special. You know what that is? It's you. It's that person that you see when you look in the mirror every morning. And you're either going to look in the mirror and you're going to see someone that is full of regret and guilt and just overall sadness because you don't do what you say you're going to do in your personal relationships, uh, for yourself, when you're at work. Or you're going to see someone that's committed to knowing more about themselves. They're committed to knowing who they are at their core, and they're committed to being accountable to what makes them unique and special. And that's really the first step in harnessing the power of accountability. It's being accountable to yourself. You see, we can't be accountable to others. We can't be accountable to uh, our, our corporation's missions and goals and vision until we're accountable to ourselves. Now, you might be asking the question, well, what do you mean by this, Dan? Well, what I mean here, guys, is that you've got to dig deep here. You've got to dig deep and really define who you are. And something that I believe, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of you believe on the phone, we may have just forgotten it because I know I forget it sometimes, is that we all have gifts and talents and skills that we were created with that we have the awesome opportunity to share with those around us, with those that we love, with those that we serve. You have passions, you have dreams that make you unique. No one else has what you have to give. And so 
Accountability to yourself is the first step. How do you get there, though? You know, what, what kind of action can you take to start being more accountable to yourself? Well, the first thing is that you can define for yourself a purpose statement. Now, again, I'm not talking about a purpose statement for your company or your team that has to do with how many mortgages you're going to close or how many chicken sandwiches you're going to make in an hour or how many widgets you're going to make. I'm talking about a purpose statement that's all about you, that really is based on your natural skills, your gifts, and your passions. It's what you bring to the table. It's the answer to the question, why am I here? Why am I getting up every day? Why do I exist? What do I want to give to this world that I'm in? It's your purpose. After you've defined what that purpose statement is, then the second action, thing, action step for you to do is to create a list of core values, principles and convictions that you would be willing to die for. These are so important because these are going to become the filter through which you make accountability choices later on. We're going to talk about those choices that you make. And these values and this, this, this purpose statement that you create, it becomes the filter through which you run everything and helps you to become more accountable. It's important because without this purpose and this core values, you have a higher probability of failing to do what you say you're going to do. And that is what leads to that guilt. That's what leads to that regret and just that overall frustration. And what it does is it becomes a reflection of your character. And I don't know about you, but I want the reflection of my character to be one where people say, there goes someone that is purposeful and intentional and someone that I can count on. I respect him or her because they do what they say they're going to do. And when you are accountable to yourself, when you understand the uniqueness that you have and what you bring to the table and you believe in yourself and you have that self-confidence and that self-worth, that's the fuel that is going to enable you to take action and be more purposeful and more intentional in every area of your life. So step one is being accountable to who you are and what you stand for. Now, step two, once you've figured out what you're going to be all about for you, it's time to ask the question, okay, now what, what are those other areas outside of me? What are those key, who are those key people? What are those key areas of my life that I want to be accountable to? Because we can't just stop and say, listen, I'm accountable only to myself. That's selfish. And, and we know that, that we, uh, the world doesn't need more people thinking only about themselves, right? And so... Life just doesn't work that way. Leadership doesn't work that way. We know that in order to have great leadership, in order to have great levels of success, it, 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 leadership and success, they're about influence. They're about relationships. They're about results. And I think most importantly, they're about respect. And it's where people will follow you because of who you are and what you represent, right? And respect comes from when you do what you say you're going to do. So what can you do to, in this step to, to take action? Well, the first thing you can do is you can ask yourself, okay, what are those key relationships in my life that I want to be held accountable to? Who are those people that are most important to me that, that they need to see me engaged? They need to see that I'm, that I'm for them and not against them and that I'm only for myself. They need to see that I'm showing up day in and day out. And when I promise to do something that I'm going to say, that whatever I promise, I'm going to do it. For me, it's people like my spouse. You know, it's my kids. Uh, if any of them ever um, had that feeling of just, Dan, I can't trust you. You said you were going to be home at 6 to eat dinner with us, and this is the third night in a row where you're home at 7.30 because you're putting clients first. That's not good. That's breaking that trust. That's me becoming unaccountable. That's me losing their respect. Right? So who are those key relationships? Maybe it's um, relationships in your community. Maybe there's some faith relationships that are, that are there. 
but what are those top relationships that are most important to you that you want to be held accountable to? Secondly, ask yourself, what are those key areas of my life personally that I need to be held accountable to? Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's your own personal development. But we all are going to have those key areas of our life that if we're not held accountable to them, especially the health, man, if you're, your mental, emotional, physical health, if you're not taking care of that, that is going to show up every single day when you walk in the door at work. And you're going to find it very difficult to be accountable to your peers, to the goals of the company, to the mission of the company. Man, you're going to struggle if you're not taking care of that area of your life. So ask yourself, what are the key relationships and what are the key areas of my life? Well, how do you do this? Well, you've you got to go through and you've you got to prioritize them, right? Uh, because I know if you're like me, I could probably come up with 20 to 25 different people and areas of my life that I, that I think are most important. Well, you've got to take that list and you've got to prioritize it and you've got to say, all right, I know that if everything is important, then what? Nothing is important, right? We know that. So this is really important for you to prioritize. Come up with about maybe 8 to 10 areas, people, accounts, if you want to call them that, that you really want to pour into and have some accountability around. Here's the principle behind this step and why this step is so important. And I learned this when I was a client of Building Champions. And the principle is this. Personal leadership always precedes team leadership. If you're a leader, this is so true. If you're an individual and you don't lead a team, then it's personal leadership precedes professional success. You see, you put a limit on your leadership capacity, your ability to achieve success, when you choose to put your team or your success ahead of your own personal leadership. That's why steps one and two are so important. Because in order for you to give your best to your team, in order for you to achieve the results that you want to achieve in life, you have to lead yourself first. And that's what steps one and two are all about. All right, let's look at step three. Once you've um, you know, got it figured out in terms of how you're going to be accountable to yourself, once you've looked at those other key areas and those key relationships in your life that you want to be held accountable to, then it's time for you to ask the question, OK, now from a professional standpoint, what do I want to be held accountable to in my career? You know, What about with my team? What about uh, in my organization? And I'm talking about more than just income and recognition and market share here. I'm talking about the essence of, of your business vision here. And again, we're going to go back to some of those similar things that you did for yourself. And I'm going to ask you in this step, the action that you can take is to identify your purpose, your mission, and your values for the workplace and what you're trying to achieve with your team or in your organization or by yourself in your career. Okay? And basically what you're saying to everyone is, guys, this is who we are. This is what, we're, what I'm asking you to belong to. All right, this is our purpose. This is our mission. These are our values. I want you to be accountable to these in every sort of interaction you have with the clients that we serve, with our vendors that we work with, and with each other. And then you're going to identify what are those key areas of development that you really want to become together. And that's really what you're saying here. Who are we going to become? If this is what we're going to hold to, this is what we're going to base everything on in the workplace, well, great, what kind of culture are we going to build? How are we going to interact as a team? How are we going to interact with our customers? And you basically start to define who are we going to become together, working in sync, holding each other accountable, aligned to our vision. Who are we going to become? And then the third question to ask yourself is, OK, we know what we're going to belong to. We know what we want to become. How are we going to go out now and change the world? How are we going to go out and create raving fans? How are we going to go out and just have an impact on the communities that we serve? And you're asking yourself the question, what are we going to build together? As a leader, you want to invite people to share your vision with you. You can't just have the vision on your own. If you want to increase accountability in the workplace, if you want to increase your own accountability in the workplace, you've got to share your vision. 
You've got to ask people to be accountable to something besides, like I said before, closing loans, making chicken sandwiches, building widgets, or serving a certain number of clients. Now I want to give you just a quick warning here. A lot of people want to start at step three and bypass steps one and two because they, they're, they're, they're all touchy-feely. It's all about myself, and I don't need to worry about that stuff. Business is, is from the gut, you know. No. It, it, what we've got to be careful of here is that you run the risk, if you skip steps one and two, of becoming a paper tiger in, in, in the business world. And what do I mean by that? Well, a paper tiger is something that seems as threatening as a tiger, but it can withstand a challenge that comes its way. And leaders, when, when, when you have a team of individuals that are accountable to themselves, that are accountable to the key areas of their life and the, the most important relationships in their life, and they're aligned around your company's vision, then you're no paper tiger. In fact, you're a force to be reckoned with. So don't make that mistake as a leader to where you say to your folks, you know what, we're going to skip steps one and two. I can skip steps one and two. I would encourage you to set up a an environment, a culture at work where steps one and two of defining who you are as a person and being accountable to that person and, and laying out the different areas of your life that you want to be accountable to, that's the norm. That's expected. It's talked about. It's shared. Because when you do that, that's when step three, that's when you can achieve so much together. And that's where you'll see the accountability as an organization just totally increase. All right, now if you're like me, step four is where I try to jump to probably every day of my life. I just want to start taking action. You know, I'm a high D, I'm a high I on the disc behavioral style, and so for me it's all about getting things done and connecting with people and achieving, right? Well, you can't start here. You can't start here because you're not equipped, right? Steps one through three where you're thinking about yourself, you're thinking about those key areas of your life, you're thinking about your organization and what you're going to be accountable to there, those are the things that equip you to take action. And if as a leader, if you're starting to see where people in your organization are not accountable, they're not doing what they say they're going to do, if you're finding that you're struggling yourself to do this, then you've got to go back to steps one through three. Because those steps equip you you, when you know yourself, you see, you know the right actions to take. You can choose the actions that are in alignment with your behavioral style. You can choose the actions that are in alignment with your purpose and your core values. You, you, you look at your skills, you look at your gifts, you look at your talents, and you can say, that's probably not the best thing for me to agree to do, but I know it would fit perfectly with this person over here. And most likely it's going to get done because that person is the right person for the job. When you're equipped with your team, you guys, you have the right people doing the right actions. Okay? All right, so let's look at taking action. There's four Ds that I want you to think about when you're designing action. And I like to I, I came up with these four Ds because I, I found that when I design action, if I think about taking action, if I don't have these four Ds, uh, a part of, of what I'm designing and what I'm trying to do, then the probability of me achieving something goes down considerably. So if you're a leader and you're assigning tasks and you're asking people to do something and be accountable to something, then I want you to think of these four Ds. If you're going out there on your own trying to work your business plan, think about this as well. The first thing is that your, your, your actions have to be designed properly. And what I mean by that is I want you to think of that SMART acronym. They need to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound disciplines or actions that you're going to take. Let me give you an example. I will call 10 referral partners in the next seven days. That's a very clearly defined action that you're going to take. It's not, I need to call more people. Hopefully, I'll generate some leads next week. Okay? That, you can't, that's hard to be accountable to that. But when, you, when you've designed it, in a very specific and a very measurable way, you're going to be much more successful. Maybe it's on a personal 
level. I, I'm going to take my wife on a date night every Friday. I'm going to volunteer two Sundays at the local homeless shelter every month. Okay, so it's designed properly. The second thing is that it's got to be documented. You know, I have all these things that I like to try and keep in my head, and if you're like me, if you don't write them down, uh, you forget about them. Um, and I have found that when you write down your actions, when you write down the things that you want to be held accountable to, when you clearly define them, it brings you focus. It brings you that clarity that you need, and it allows you to remember. You know, every day when I walk into my office, I, I have coaching calls that I'm on, and I think about all these projects maybe that I'm working on and different presentations that I'm doing, and I have all these things swirling around in my head, and then I look on my wall, and I see my one-page business plan where it's got my goals for the quarter, it's got my disciplines that I've committed to doing that I want to be held accountable to, and I've written them down, and all of a sudden I've got focus. I've got clarity. The craziness is gone, and I can remember to focus in on those, those six or seven disciplines, those actions that I want to be held accountable to. The third D is that you declare it. And this is where you go to someone and you share with them and you say, okay, hey, this is what I want to be held accountable to. This is what I'm trying to achieve. These are the actions that I want to take. I just want to share these with you, and, 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 I, and I want to talk to you about them. If you're in a team setting, if you're at a work setting, this is what your team should be doing. Your team should get around together at a conference table and say, okay, this is what I'm trying to achieve. This is what I want to be held accountable to. Let's talk about it. You declare the actions. You don't just keep them inside. You just don't keep them to yourself. You talk to them with other people. And it's when you talk to them with other people that you hit the fourth D. And it's not just simply saying, hey, guys, this is what I'm going to do. The discussion part comes when you give someone permission to ask you about those actions, about those goals, about those things you said you wanted to be held accountable to. You give someone permission to encourage you and challenge you and stretch you so that you can be accountable to those disciplines. All right, once you've designed action, probably the most difficult step is to now take that action, take those things that you want to be held accountable to, and decide to start putting them into your schedule, to dedicate time every single week to doing it. And many people, you know, they just approach their day with whatever comes. And this, folks, is where the tyranny of the urgent just loves to live. And the result of living a life constantly in the tyranny of the urgent is a lack of focus. It's a lack of being purposeful and intentional. And it's a failure to be accountable. If you are a leader and you have a failure of accountability in your organization, most likely it goes back to the fact that people are not scheduling their weeks, planning their days, filling their time, in their day with the activities that they need to do in order to achieve success. All right, so how do you do this? Now, I just wanted to give you a couple of very quick things that you could do, very simple actions that you can take. And the first one, to be proactive with your week, is to plan your week, OK? And that seems simple, but I, you know, here's what I do. It's a best practice that I coach my folks on. I take one night a week, and I plan my entire week. I review my personal purpose, my values, those key relationships and priorities, and I go to my calendar and I say, okay, where do I need to plug time in so that I'm focusing on these people and these key areas of my life? Where am I going to fit my workouts? Where am I going to fit my date night? Where am I going to fit time going to my son's Lego building class at school? I review my vision and I start putting in where are certain areas of the day that I need to focus on uh, growth and development in my career and as a coach and what I'm trying to achieve. And then you have to go back to those actions that you created in step four, those disciplines that you've said, okay, these are the things I need to be held accountable to, and you plug those in. And you block time in your calendar, and these become non-negotiable for you. All right? The next step is to share that schedule. Don't just have it on your computer, print it out, and look at it and think, oh, that's nice. I hope it works out. Share it with someone, your assistant, someone else in your office. Post it on your door. Let people know what your schedule looks like. Let them know what you're accountable to. Let them know what your non-negotiables are. 
okay? Because that gives them permission to do the same thing, and that creates that culture of accountability. Then you don't have those door knocks where you say, hey, you got a minute? It's like, no, it's on the door. I, I, I'm prospecting right now. I'm in a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with a teammate right now. You know, I actually know I'm leaving to go home and so I can go to my kid's soccer game right now. You give permission for there to be, be that culture of accountability. And finally, at the end of each day, reflect on your schedule. Reflect on your day and just do a simple keep, start, stop. What worked that I want to keep doing? What did I not get to today that I really want to make sure I, I start doing in my schedule? I need to start saying no. I need to start saying, no, nope, sorry, I've got an appointment during that time. And what are the things you got to stop doing that just that took you off your schedule? All right, the final step in becoming more accountable and harnessing that power of accountability is to commit to an accountability partner. This has got to be someone you trust, someone that you're willing to have challenge you, someone that will encourage you, someone that, like I said, will stretch you. Leaders, this might be you. You might need to add one-on-one -on -one coaching to your leadership disciplines. And you know, we actually did a quick survey that we took as we sent out the invitation for this. 58% of you said you have no one to hold you personally accountable in your personal life. 33% of you said you have no one to hold you accountable on the professional side of your life. So leaders, this might be a huge opportunity for you with you and your team. But let me say something to those of you right now that really don't have anybody that's holding you accountable. If you're represented in that group, do you believe that you could be more purposeful, more intentional, and accountable with an accountability partner? See, I believe that you could be. And I know here at Building Champions we believe that you could be as well. We believe it so much that it's really how we've designed our coaching process. We've designed it in a way that we focused on what's called the core four. And in the core four, we have this thing called a life plan, where the life plan has you identify your purpose, your values, those key relationships that you're going to be accountable to. We walk you through a business vision where you say, okay, what is the company's vision? What is our purpose? What is our, our values? What are we going to belong to, what are we going to become, and what are we going to build together? And then we have a business plan that we walk you through where we have you write down goals, write down specific disciplines that you're going to take on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to help you be more accountable in the workplace. And finally, we have our priority management plan, which is just what I talked about. It's scheduling your week. It's making sure that you've got your priorities, you've got your disciplines, your goals, your to-dos, your projects. It's all in there. It's at the heart of what we do every single day in the coach's chair, is we help people to define who they're going to be accountable to. We help them discover the wonder, wonderful, amazing um, person that they are inside that they have to be accountable to first, and then we help them build that vision for where they want to go. It's at the heart of what we do every day. So let's review those, those, those six steps just real quick here. Step one, you've got to be accountable to yourself. Step two, you've got to be accountable to those key relationships and those key areas of your life. You have to identify what you're going to be personally accountable to. Step three, who and what are you going to be accountable to at work? What are you going to ask people to belong to and become and build together? And then you've got to take action, but you've got to design that action in the right way. It can't just be generic statements. It has to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time sensitive, right? It's got to be documented, got to be discussed, got to be declared. And then you plan your week. You plan your week based on your priorities. And finally, you get an accountability partner. And maybe that accountability partner for you is your leader. Maybe it's a peer. Maybe it's a mentor. For many of you, you might not have that person. And if you want to know more about what we do here at Building Champions, then I want to invite you to engage. If you want to know what it's 
like to work with a coach, just drop us an email at info at buildingchampions.com, and we'd love to talk to you more about it. Look for some accountability tools uh, in your email. Next month's webinar is going to be the seven deadly sins of sales professionals, and then in April we're going to be talking about leadership development. I hope you found these six steps helpful for you. Again, if you want to know more, engage us. We'd love to talk with you. It's what we do every single day. You were made for a purpose. You are an amazing individual that has so much to offer to this world. Discover that for yourself, and then you can start being accountable in every other area of your life, personally and professionally.